This is Basilosaurus isis, or Basilosaurus isis, some people pronounce it. And it's a 16 meter long, 50 foot whale from a place called Wadi Hitan, a World Heritage Site. And what's interesting about it is its shape. Look how long and snake-like it is. It's quite different from any modern whale and quite different from almost all the fossil whales that ever lived. Now, the reason we're interested in it is to try to understand how this unusual whale lived, how it swam, what it ate, why it was like this. I imagine it swam something like a snake, not like a modern whale really pushing its way through the water with its tail and probably swam more like an eel. The reason animals are shaped like that today is because they swim long distances through the ocean very efficiently, energetically. And so it's possible that this whale too, in its time, swam long distances efficiently, energetically, and was a, a cosmopolitan whale. It's found in Egypt, the best specimens are, but they're also known from North America here and they're known from Pakistan, so they're widely distributed. The exhibit museum tells the story of life on Earth, and when museum visitors see Basilosaurus, they'll be able to see evidence for whale evolution, which is one of the more interesting stories in evolution. And uh, it's a spectacular fossil. It's, uh, it's ferocious, it's got big teeth. Well, this particular specimen was found by a preparator working for us here at the University of Michigan and he found a little bit of its shoulder blade exposed in the sand. Pretty soon he showed the, ho the whole thing was showing and as he continued he realized that their lower jaws were there. Now this was right at the end of the field season in 1987 and so we made a note of it and covered it up and came back in 1989 and excavated the skull and the lower jaws. And those have been on exhibit here ever since. About 2003, I was invited to uh, help draft a proposal to make this site a World Heritage Site. They wanted the research to continue. They wanted me to start again. And I remembered that there was a tail coming out of the hill, which would be just the right length to be the tail of the specimen for which we have the head. And the bone of this is so nicely preserved that I thought the skeleton, if it's there, would be too. And in 2005, we did the excavation. Fossils arrived in crates, in plaster jackets uh, from Egypt. We're talking about four tons of sediment with the whales encased inside of that sediment. And it was our job to remove those whales from the sediment. We had to use tools like air scribes, which are miniature jackhammers and a small army of Europe students and student assistants and work-study students to engage in this process. And it took about, I would say, a little over a year. So the most um, elaborate and, and exhausting part of the project is making a replica of the original material. We make replicas because we want to put specimens on display for the public because we need to return the original fossils to their home country. So they require molds that are many, many pieces. For example, the, the skull uh, required a mold of 16 pieces. The molding took probably a year and a half, longer than it took to get the bone out of the rock. Um, Basilosaurus is a tremendously long and large fossil. The exhibit staff spent some time working with Professor Gingrich to figure out exactly how to handle them where. What we wanted to do was um, create the, a very ultra lightweight um, skeleton to hang from the ceiling. Uh, the Dordon skeleton, which we did more than a decade ago, I think weighs over 200 pounds. And we wanted to limit this to no more than that, even though the mass is like more than three times. Partly because of the ceiling, it's an old building, there's plaster falling from the ceiling, so we wanted to minimize the risks of that. Usually the casts we make are, are hollow, and so they're, they're far lighter than, than bone itself but they are several layers of resin with fiberglass embedded and 
they cast themselves, you know, a couple of pounds, a few pounds for each each vertebra. And if you add that up over the 60 or 70 vertebrae, it, it ends up being quite a bit of weight there. And then, um, so we wanted to cut down on that as much as we could. So the idea was that we would make a mold that we could pour a, a lightweight expanding foam into so that the cast themselves would be made out of this lightweight foam. symbolizes the internationalism of the university, if you want to think of it that way. In terms of my research, it's much better to see an animal mounted complete as a skeleton. Just the act of mounting it makes you think about how the bones really fit together and confront uncertainties that you would never realize you didn't understand until you try to fit them together. So it's been very satisfying to me and informative and a learning experience to mount it here. It will be one of only two display casts um, on view in the world. The other is at Wadi Hattan, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Egypt, in the location where Basilosaurus was originally found. And putting a specimen like this on display is a fantastic way of showing something about the past. And any time you put a whole animal on display in some kind of a posture, can immediately start to get some idea of the life ways and paleobiology of that animal that an individual bone in a dusty drawer can't give you.